Okay, our next video is going to be designed around um, the, uh, our next assignment, rather, is going to be uh, making sure that you guys are use, learning how to use filters on movie clips. Okay, and you've seen it before. All you have to do is select the movie clip, and let's see here. I'm going to select this movie clip. I got my layers are locked here, so let me unlock all my layers. And of course, I can click on this, and you'll see if I go to filters that this logo has um, no filter on it at the moment. Um, but inside of it, it has a glow filter. There's a movie clip inside of that one that has a glow filter inside of it. So there is a filter there. But I want to make sure that you guys are using filters. So the assignment is to make sure that you guys are using filters on your page. Now, in, um, let's see here, in using filters in blend modes. Rich Shoup does some amazing stuff. This is the lynda.com website and he does some really really cool stuff here. So I want you to watch these movies, filters and blend modes, and I want you to apply some filters to your site. Now uh, it could be as easy as this. Uh, I've got um, this thing that is zooming in here, right? This page. And what I could do is I could click on it and make sure that it has a filter. So maybe a drop shadow filter and I can um, of course set the blur distance which if it's locked will be um, w if it's locked will uh, be even 12 and 12 I can unlock this too by clicking right there and then strength I've got it set to 100 percent I can set quality on this and all kinds of stuff and I don't know if you can tell it's there now but it is there let's see here if I make it bigger you might be able to see it I can change the color to purple. Now you can definitely see the um, the drop shadow. Of course, I don't want it purple. Um, let's see. I'll change it to eight. Change the color to black, and I think that'd be good. Now I put it on this the on this movie clip, the page movie clip, on this keyframe. But on this keyframe back here, it's small and invisible. What I probably want to do is either put it on again here by clicking on it and setting it here, or just waiting until it zooms in and then applying it on the last frame. So on the last frame, it, the uh, drop shadow is applied. And it will actually tween into effect from here to here. If it doesn't have one here, it does have one here. I believe it will tween into effect. But I found another cool application for this, which I'm going to show you right now, and that is on my um, animation that I did. I wanted to show you the animation that I did. Um, this is really cool. I think you guys will like this. Remember when we did this? We brought video in. Well, here's my video, and that is um, uh, my son jumping, right? And I made a little uh, video to uh, keyframes animation of it. And a couple things here. First of all, I want you to see that I used rulers, and I took the ruler and I dragged out guides to help me. Now, how do you do that? You go to View, Rulers, and make sure Rulers is on. And then when you want to, um, excuse me, and then when you want to uh, use a ruler, you just click on the ruler with your Move tool and drag a guide out. So anyway, I have it all set up. And another couple thing is, I added frames to the animation, and I even changed the speed. So I changed the speed to 15 frames per second, but I added in between frames in between right so I clicked on the keyframes let's say shift hold down the shift key click on both and if I hit a five it will add frames in between okay so I just hit f5 a bunch of times I need to go back alright and so I added some space in between now watch what happens when he jumps alright uh, a couple of things that I did was is when he gets to his jump right he was staying twice in the same place and I thought well that's no good it's not very jumping like so I expanded it to three frames and then actually just moved him over three frames moved him up so we get to the jump part and then watch this one two he goes higher two frames in a row I haven't changed his position it's still the same frame in the video but I just moved him slightly to move him upwards and um, I thought that was good. Then when he comes down, I also move him slightly downwards, and then we go back to one and two. And in this case, I also have two layers. I have my um, my character, right? 
the sprite here, but I also had this other layer of um, the shadow. And what I did with the shadow was something di similar. When he is moving here, first of all, I blurred the shadows. So I click on the shadow, and you'll see the shadow. I applied a blur filter to the shadow to make it a little bit better. And also, um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then when I get when he jumps in the air, watch what I did. I decided to blur the shadow even more, right? And let's see here. With filters, you can see that on the shadow, I've blurred the shadow even more. And I've even changed it so that my X value blur and my Y value blur are different, right? So um, I thought that was pretty cool that I did that. I was digging on that. And also these shadows, as you know, are see-through. So if I change the background color, right, I could just, you know, uh, you'll see a different color showing up in the shadow. Now, how could I do that very easily? I could just go here to my shadows, right? And you see this last one doesn't have a blur on it. I need to put a blur on that one. Um, yeah, there we go. And this one, let's see if this one has a blur. Nope, this one doesn't. I'll put a blur on that one. All right. And this one has a blur, so I'm all good. The other thing that I can do is, um, with these uh, shadows, I could actually make them alpha right? You see that I've made this alpha 60%, right? And so when he's jumping in the air, I could actually make the color. If I click on the movie clip and go to alpha in this color window, you see 60%. So I have an alpha on all of my shadows. Now, what does alpha do? It makes it transparent makes it see-through. So you can see if I click on the movie clip and change my alpha, I could make it, you know, more see-through if I wanted to and so make the shadow stronger. All right? So that's a couple of things. Now, some of you don't have a shadow when you did your um, video to uh, layers animation. So I'm going to show you a new technique that I think you're really going to dig. And that is what I did on this file. On this file, let's see here, on import 2, File, Open Recent, let's see here, Import 2, okay, on Import 2 what I decided to do was I decided to follow along with Rich Shoup in this video here uh, called um, Animating Filters, and in this video he does this really neat thing where he's got the skateboarder, right, and the skateboarder um, moves across the animation right and then he puts a shadow on it but what he does is he totally changes the drop shadow so when the skateboarder goes across this jump he makes the drop shadow change see how that happens so the drop shadow is farther away from the skateboarder but not only that he also distorts the drop shadow which creates an even different effect so when when the when the skateboarder is in the air he makes the drop shadow move away from the character he also makes it smaller right and he um, makes it more see-through. So you get this effect like the skateboarders jumping off the um, page. Now if you want to know how he did this, it's really, really, really interesting. And I'll show you what he does. Well, first of all, let me tell you again that that is Animating Filters, which is the third tutorial in Chapter 11. Flash, Rich Shoup, uh, Flash CS3 Professional Essential Training. So what he does is, is pretty interesting. I'm going to um, show you. I'll turn off these two layers. All I have is my character layer, right? And this is what he does. First of all, he copies all of his animations. I'm going to hold down the shift key. First I have to unlock it. Hold down the shift key and select the frames. Then right click on all the frames, copy frames. Then I'm going to make a new layer, right? And hold down the shift key and select all the frames where I want to paste them. And then right click on them and paste frames, okay? And so now I have two sets of, of pieces. So I'm going to turn off the eyeball on the bottom set and I'll lock it so I have this new set of keyframes of the character, right? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this little button right here which is called Edit Multiple Frames and I'm going to drag open the, um, the onion skinning, uh, these handlebars. And I'll click on the last one. You'll see that I need to drag this all the way open so that I edit all the frames. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use